So coming to the special test in cervical spine examination. For cervical spine test, first, the first test is L. Hermit sign, which is a special test in which we ask the patient to bend the neck like this. If because of this bending, there is electric current like sensation traveling in the arm and in the leg, especially in the leg, that this, then this means there is some problem in the upper cervical spine or near the brainstem region. But this test is not diagnostic of cervical spine pathology. Always remember that this can happen in B12 deficiency, multiple sclerosis also. So, when you do this and the test is positive, it might be because of some pathology which is pressing the upper cervical spine region, especially the posterior column of the spinal tracts, because of which that this current is flowing down the leg. Now, the second special test is the head, uh, hand on the head sign. Whenever there is a radiating pain traveling down the arm, if there is a radicular pain and the patient keeps the arm like this, he will complain of severe pain because of the nerve root stretch. But as soon as he will take the hand up and keep over his head, basically hand over head sign. So this relaxes the stretch on the nerve because of the prolapse disc or any pathologies that, that is stretching the nerve and the patient's pain will disappear. This test is also very relevant because in history itself the patient will tell you that when I keep my hand over my head like this, especially in the night while sleeping or while traveling, it gives me relief. Now coming to the third test, the third test is known as the compression test. So if the patient is sitting like this and complaining of supposing pain radiating down, the, radiating down this arm because of the disc prolapse and you ask the patient to sit straight like this. Then very gently you apply a compression on the cervical spine. Now the important point here is you should not give jerk. You should not do like this. You should apply a stable, uh, stable and gradual pressure and then slowly you should increase that pressure. So supposing you are keeping hands like this and you apply a vertical compression force and the patient complains of pain, uh, increase in the pain, then this test is positive. Similarly, another modification of this test is when we bend the neck like this, say to 30 degrees or 45 degrees and then we press again. So when we do like this, if there is a disc in the spine which is pressing the nerve, when we do like this, the area for the disc becomes very less and on top of that, when we do compression, the area becomes even less. So this test causes even more pain radiating down the arm. So if vertical compression test is not positive, then only you should do this test. If the vertical compression test is positive and you go on, and you go on and do this test, the patient might even complain of severe pain or might end up with some neuro deficit. So now the third test in the same sequence is when we do a cervical distraction test. Supposing if patient is complaining of pain going down this arm, we hold the hand, we keep our fingers under the jaw. With this thumb, I stabilize the posterior part of the head and then I pull the patient's neck towards the ceiling. When I do this, there is a distraction or there is a traction in the cervical spine because of which the space for the nerve increases. So this reduces the pressure onto the nerve and the pain in the arm reduces. So all these tests are special tests for cervical spine disc prolapse. So these are stretch tests. Now coming to the <coughs> next test which is the lateral compression test or the lateral stretch test. In this test we ask the patient to simply bend the neck to the affected side. If while doing this test the radicular pain in the arm increases that means there is a pressure on the disc that there is a pressure on the nerve from the lateral side. Similarly if while doing this test the pain in this arm increases, then there is, that means that there is a pressure on the nerve from the medial side, that is the, the pathology is medial to the nerve. So now coming on to the next test, the next two tests are basically for thoracic outlet, outlet syndrome. You should know two tests for thoracic outlet syndrome because very commonly in DNB or MS exam, the examiner asks you to differentiate between cervical spine pathology and thoracic outlet syndrome. So the first test is the AdSense test in which you take out an externally rotated, you abduct 
and externally rotate the patient's arm to say around 30 degrees. You keep, uh, you measure, you take a measure of the patient's radial pulse. You ask the patient to bend the neck towards the affected side and ask the patient to take deep breath. Gary sans lo up. So, while doing this maneuver, if there is a drop in the radial pulse, then that means that there is a positive thoracic outlet syndrome possibility. Similarly, the other test is the ruse test. For this test, you take the, you ask the patient to take the surrender position in which the arm is abducted, externally rotated, elbows are flexed. And then you keep both your, uh, you take measure of the, of both the radial pulses. And then you ask the patient to repeatedly uh, close the hand and loosen it for three minutes. And you, and you take a measure of the radial pulse. While doing this, if you feel after some time, there is a difference between the radial pulse on both the sides or the patient starts complaining of numbness, tingling or pain in the arm, in any particular particular limb, then the test is positive. One modification of this test is when you ask the patient to take deep breath in between and hold it, say for 30 seconds and for, or 40 seconds and then you perform this test again. So these two tests are specific for thoracic outlet syndrome. So, these are some of the special tests in cervical spine that you are supposed to know for your MS or TNP exam.